The handguns of today combine speed and accuracy. But the classic pistols combine aesthetics and an interesting history. It was the handgun of Samuel Colt that not only helped conquering the West, but was made famous in countless Western movies. Not only that, it also soldiered on until today, being in continuous production with the exception of two short breaks. However, it's not just Colt's famous revolver that has a rich history and a great look. That is why today we will look at all seven classic handguns that every American shooter should own or at least know about. Number 7. Colt Single Action Army The Colt Single Action Army was designed in 1872 and manufacturing started in 1873. In fact, it is still in production today. There was only two breaks. The first was from 1941 to 1956, and the second from 1974 to 1976. Since then, almost nothing has changed in the design of this iconic handgun. It's probably the most famous revolver ever made. You can see it in drawings, cowboy movies, and nowadays in cowboy action shooting. When you think of a shootout in the Wild West, you probably imagine this gun in the hands of the good old gunslingers. Even movies that are actually set in the time before it was made show it as is simply the gun associated with cowboys. Well, it was the Winchester 1873 lever-action rifle that is called a gun that won the West. It is the Colt Single Action Army that helped it do its work. For that, it came in many different chamberings and allowed to share the ammo of its bigger brother. For example, the 4440 Winchester Center Fire. Another often used chamberings was in 45 Colt. Even with black powder, these big boar slugs did a short work on their targets. Number 6. Nagant M1895 Revolver The Nagant Revolver can be had in either double or single action, and if you think that the name reminds you of something, you would be right. It is the Moss and Nagant Rifle that we all know, and that was the standard issue for Russian soldiers in World War II. Since then, it has literally flooded the military surplus market. Not only is it dirt cheap to buy, it's also chambered in 762 by 54 mm rimfire, one of the cheapest options on the ammo market. Leon and Emil, the two Nagant brothers, did not stop at this one rifle. They also designed a cheap handgun for the Russian military. In its time, it was a marvel of engineering. It came with a sliding cylinder and extended firing pin. Interesting was its chambering in 762 mm. Cartridges have their bullets buried deep inside the case itself. The mouth is flared, and that for a very specific reason. Normally, every cylinder loses a bit of its power to the cylinder gap. To eliminate that, the cylinder of the Nagant revolver slides forward. This leads to the flared case being matted with the back of the barrel. That way, there is no cylinder gap left. While sealing everything, this sliding forward does cause another problem. The rounds are moving forward. To still be able to reach them, the firing pin that is mounted on the hammer has to be extra long with a whopping three quarters of an inch. This makes for a very distinctive look when the revolver is cocked. The double action variant was specifically made for officers, while the single action variant was meant for the masses. Well, there was replacement starting with the Tokarev pistol in 1933 and the Makarov in 1952, the Nagat revolver stayed in service for many years more. Number 5. Colt 1911. When a single action revolver chambered in 45 Colt is not enough, you just take the good old 1911 chambered in 45 ACP. This gun with that round does not have to be shy. To the contrary, with this round, it does put an end to every attacker rather fast. Today, some might think that the 1911 is an antiquated design. The only reason they can bring forward is that the gun is now past 110 years of life, at least as a design. However, what is working well does not need any improvement, and the 1911 does its job quite nicely. There are many who share the view that the 1911 and the 45 ACP still have their place. You can easily see that based on the sales and how many different 1911-style pistols are available. Over its many years in existence, this beauty has won every single handgun competition there is or has been on this planet. It's just durable, reliable, and it comes with a great accuracy and stopping power. 45 ACP was based on the experience of the United States fighting in the Philippines from 1899 to 1902. At that time, double-action revolvers chambered in 38 long Colt were just not strong enough. As a result, the 45 caliber was seen as the minimum for a handgun of the military. That led to John Browning developing first the 45 ACP in 1904, as well as the 1911 in the year 1911. With some changes in the name of modernization, the 1911 is still regarded as the best pistol, and the 45 ACP the best cartridge, at least in the mind of many shooters. The one and only downside, the rather limited capacity in the magazine does not take anything away from that. Number 4. The Browning High Power 
John Moses Browning came up with the design of the Browning High Power as his final handgun design. He passed away while working on it. It was introduced in 1935 as a defensive pistol and was developed quite a cult following since then. It has seen a great share of service within different militaries and law enforcement agencies, especially in Europe. While the design seems a little bit old and antiquated when compared to modern plastic guns, it is still a comparatively small all-metal handgun with a double-stack magazine with 13 rounds of 9mm rounds in it. There are magazines available that even hold 15 rounds. While having a lot going for it, there are also some downsides. First, this gun comes with a magazine safety. That means you cannot fire it there is no magazine inserted. That is unnecessary and completely undesirable in a fight. Furthermore, the hammer can actually hit the hand of the shooter as the beaver tail is too short to protect against it. While Browning stopped its production in 2017, there are still a lot of clones available, like the Springfield SA-35 and FN High Power. Both introduced enough changes to get rid of the shortcomings of the original design. This makes this great gun even greater. Number 3. Smith & Wesson N-Frame Model 2729 the year 1935 brought us an iconic new cartridge. Before that year, handguns were just used for defense. For hunting and sport, they were considered too weak. All that changed when in 1935, the 357 Magnum made its entry. For this new round, there came the Smith & Wesson registered revolver that evolved into what is now known as the Model 27. While mostly meant for law enforcement, this gun also started the Magnum revolver as a concept for modern civilian shooters. The Model 27 used an end frame and came highly polished. It looked like a work of art and definitely had the price of one. What followed was the Model 28, which was a less polished version with a lower price tag. This was not the end of the end frame. In 1955, there came the next edition in the form of the Model 29 revolver, a hand cannon chambered for the new 44 Magnum cartridge, made famous by the Dirty Harry movie, sporting it as the world's strongest handgun that stormed the market. Every serious handgun shooter of that time had to have at least one of both revolvers in its safe. During the IHMSA competition, more than three-quarters of the new shooters shot up with the Model 29. Elmer Keith played a role in developing both Magnum cartridges. He even hit a wounded mule deer at 600 yards with the 44 Magnum. Both models are probably the most responsible for launching the sport of the modern-day handgun hunting. Both can take down a deer and the 44 Magnum, even the biggest game on Earth. Number 2. Remington XP-100 the Remington XP-100, short for Experimental Pistol No. 100, is a bolt-action pistol. It was produced from 1963 to 1998. When it came out, it was chambered in 222 Remington. But the muzzle blast was quite substantial thanks to its short barrel length of only 10 inches. This led to Remington shortening the case and thereby creating the 221 Fireball. Stock came with a center grip and was made of reinforced nylon, sported racy lines and white diamond inlays. The barrel had a vented rib with a shark's fin front sight. This optics led to it being called the Buck Rogers Space Gun. Later versions had longer barrels and some even a rear grip stock. Also, the material for the stock changed to fiberglass or just wood, as well as laminated wood. They came in different short action chamberings. In IHMSA competition, it was the challenge to knock over rams with a weight of 50 pounds at a range of 200 yards. That inspired some interesting ideas. For example, some could even shoot a shortened 458 Winchester with a recoil that could only be called brutal. The pistol was based on the Model 600 rifle. The bolt action made it super accurate, so it was no surprise that it dominated the IMSHA open class. Because of the demands of said competition, Remington provided it in some BR-style cartridges. For them, there is no factory ammo available, so shooters have to hand load their rounds. Being able to use modern high-pressure rifle cartridges, the XP-100 also made it into the market for handgun hunting. With its power, it could hunt every game on Earth. It could even get long-range shot perfectly on target with enough power to make an impression. Number 1. Thompson Center Contender Warren Center developed in his home shop in New Hampshire a unique pistol. Using a brake action, it was a single-shot design. Center joined the KW Thompson Tool Company, bringing his little project along, turning it into the Thompson Contender two years later in 1967. Being a brake action, Center designed it so that the one barrel could easily be swapped for one with another caliber. This way, you just have to buy one gun with several barrels, and you can shoot many different cartridges. Switching the barrel does not affect the zero of the pistol as the sights or scopes just stay with the barrel itself. At the beginning, it was just chambered for low-pressure cartridges with very little recoil. This included 22 Long Rifle, 22 Winchester Magnum Rimfire, 22 Hornet, 22 Remington Jet, and the 38 Special. 
However, over time, the available variants grew in number. Now you can also get it as 45 Colt and 410 shotgun version. Other calibers are 357 Magnum and 44 Magnum. At first, the contender was kind of a flop, as it was too different for the market. However, in the late 1970s, the IHMSA long-range competition started to gain some traction as well as handgun hunting. The contender proved itself in both areas and outclassed its competitors. That led to a category in long-range competitions reserved just for this break-action gun. This success resulted in more and more chamberings for the contender. This added the 3030, 35 Remington, and 4570 being added to the list of calibers it can shoot. Later, an improved version, the G2, was introduced. It could even handle the mighty 3 odd 6 and 416 Rigby. However, after Smith & Wesson took over the company, the contender started to fade away. And there you have it, guys, the seven classic beauties you should own. If you can think of another gun that should belong on this list, please put it into the comments and don't forget to tell us why.